The 2022 Formula One schedule so far is shaping up to be a great season, and one fan favorite reason is everything that is happening at Haas. Haas, or some other F1 teams may argue Ferrari, have built a beautiful mid-pack car, dropped a highly unpopular driver in Mezepen due to Russia's needless war in Ukraine, while also bringing back a fan favorite in Kevin Magnussen and doing it all while looking like rock stars. While Gene Haas has created the most successful new entry to F1 in a long time, and arguably the most successful American F1 team in history, depending on your definition, Gene wasn't even the first Haas to bring an American F1 team to the grid. We start our story in Ludwig Schiffen, a city located on the Rhine River in southwestern Germany where in 1929 Karl Haas, no relation to Jean Haas, was born to a Jewish father and in 1938, at the age of 9, Haas and his family emigrated to the United States like many Jewish families in the 1930s. Haas would grow up in Chicago, studying his adventures in the automotive world selling gearbox parts out of his parents' home. Those funds would then be used for a young Haas to begin racing sports cars in 1952, having winning success driving Ferraris, Porsches, MGs, and Jaguars. Haas would continue racing sports cars through the rest of the 1950s and early 1960s before retiring from competition in his 30s to focus on motorsports team ownership and related racing businesses. Haas in 1960 founded his own company, Carl A. Haas Auto Imports, in a Chicago suburb that focused on racing distribution deals, and later Haas expanded in 1967 to become the exclusive American importer of Lola cars. Haas is credited, at least in part, to helping Lola to obtain a national prominence in the racing world. In the 1970s, Haas's team explored many various series, from Formula 5000 and Can-Am to the Super V series. Haas's Can-Am team would field racing drivers ranging from Formula 1 champions Jackie Stewart and Alan Jones to Jackie Ix, Peter Revson, and David Hobbs. Haas would expand his ambitions partnering with famed actor and racing driver Paul Newman to form Newman Haas Racing in 1983, a team that would compete in the kart series, the predecessor to the modern-day Indy series. Newman Haas would win their first car championship in the following year with Mario Andretti and would go on to win several more championships in that series. While Haas was having massive success in his professional life across his businesses and race teams, Jim Dutt, CEO of Beatrice Foods, came to Haas about creating a Formula One team with massive backing from his company. Beatrice was a major American food processing company that had brands such as Hunch, Tropicana, Butterball, Playtex, Avis Rental Cars, and was also a major independent bottler of Coca-Cola, in addition to 200 other significant brands on five continents. Haas had no burning desire to start a Formula One team. He already had his plate full, but Dutt recognized that Haas was who he needed as Haas was widely regarded as a no-nonsense, get-it-done entrepreneur. Dutt simplified philosophy was go bigger and better than the competition could even contemplate. And after listening to Dutt's full proposal, that is exactly what happened, as the two quickly negotiated a multi-year contract that would all but guarantee success under Haas's leadership. Dutt expected that Haas would have a European-based Formula 1 team up and running in less than a year. With the financial backing of Beatrice, Team Haas set out to secure an engine manufacturer deal which proved hard for the deep-pocketed American team. Mario Andretti personally contacted and arranged a meeting for Carl Haas, Dutt, and himself with Enzo Ferrari, who turned down the request to provide a power plant. Haas then moved on to Porsche with a similar meeting and similar result. While the European brands were overwhelmingly welcoming to the American team, providing an engine to what could become a primary rival was not in those teams' best interests. After several meetings, Haas was able to secure an engine deal with Ford, who was already in the process of developing a replacement for its aging Cosworth DFV V8. The new turbocharged V6 engine was to be used exclusively by Haas for three seasons. Team Haas then went on and recruited former American McLaren F1 manager Teddy Mayer to run the day-to-day -day operations of the team, who would then purchase a factory in Cullenbrook, England, and establish Force, or Formula One race car engineering. Force would house the team's designers, led by former Williams engineer Neil Oatley, whose supporting cast included up-and-comer Ross Braun, who had just completed a stint with the recently formed Williams team. Force would quickly start work on the Oatley design to THL1, which Haas decided to enter under the constructor name of Lola to associate the popular car brand with his own outfit, even though Lola had nothing to do with the team. For the start of Haas's first campaign in 1985, the force design car was still under active development It would only be ready by the 12th round of the championship at the Italian Grand Prix, which if that was not bad enough, the Ford promised engines were also not ready as engine designer Keith Duxworth originally wanted to use a four-cylinder engine, which he believed to be more compact and fuel-efficient, fouled, and put the project at least four months behind the original schedule. So Team Haas, along with the newly unretired former F1 champion Alan Jones, were stuck using an unfinished chassis and a parts bin commissioned 1.5 liter turbocharged heart racing engine to start their season. Team Haas would enter four of the five final races of the season, showing some pace including Alan Jones running six for a period of time at the Adelaide Street Circuit before retiring with an electrical issue. Team Haas would not finish a single race that season, with the hope that the 1986 season would bring more fruitful results. 
The 1986 season would start with Hostel using the THL1 and the Hart Racing engines for the first two Grand Prix for Alex Jones and the new addition Patrick Tambay. The first two races saw both drivers retire at the Brazilian Grand Prix and Tambay finishing eighth at the Portuguese Grand Prix. For the third race of the season, both the THL2 and the Ford V6 Tech engines were ready to show off their might, or so Haas had hoped, but yet it was another case of both cars failing to finish the race, with Jones commenting during qualifying that it was a great handling car, but that more horsepower was needed. Team Haas's first classified finish in Formula one would come one week later at Spa when Alan Jones was able to bring his car home to an 11th place finish for the team and a 10th place finish the following week at the Canadian Grand Prix where his teammate was injured in a heavy crash during warm-up. With Tom Bay's injury and the inability to contest the Detroit Grand Prix, Haas turned to former F1 champion Mario Andretti to compete, but he declined and suggested his son Michael instead. Haas, unable to obtain a super license for Michael in time, turned to American Eddie Cheever, who qualified 10th and was running in the points prior to a mechanical failure, which also plagued Jones for the following two races as well. The German Grand Prix saw both cars finishing the same race for the first time, with Tom Bay finishing 8th and Jones 9th. Tom Bay would follow up the performance with a 7th place at the Hungarian Grand Prix as well. The Australian Grand Prix saw many top teams fall out due to mechanical issues, leading both Team Haas cars to finish 4th and 5th, earning the first points for the team, with Jones adding additional points at Monza for 6 total points for Team Haas at the conclusion of the 1986 season. While the results were improving for the newly formed team, what was not improving was Beatrice's relationship with motorsports. Before the first Team Haas car hit the track, Jim Dutt had been removed as CEO due to discontent among top executives who were very much in disagreement with Dutt's approach to marketing and advertising, such as the rumored $75 million guaranteed in a five-year contract to Team Haas. Beatrice would still fund the 1985 campaign, and over several months of negotiations in 1986, both sides came to an undisclosed agreement in the $25 million range to sever the relationship with Team Haas, completing the 1986 season all on their own. Kyle Haas had every intentions of continuing the Formula One project into the 1987 season, but with no sponsors willing to provide the needed capital, Team Haas sold all of its assets, including their English factory, to other teams, and the original Team Haas F1 campaign came to an unceremonious end.